Hi everyone, it is still May 16, 2019. I have some new information on the Oroville Dam that I want to pass along to you and I hope that you circulate this information starting this video at water level. Lake Oroville is now at 890 feet point 22. Remember, 890 feet 890 feet. Remember that. Put it in the back of your head. All right. Um, well, so rare May storm slams California with record breaking rainfall, travel disrupting snow. Yes, they got snow. Uh, they had uh, shut down an interstate or no, a highway, I think. Um, well, tractor trailers were having accidents. Look at this rainfall. Now, I've never heard of Benedo, five inches. Yorkville, 2.64. Santa Rosa, 2.12. Sacramento, 1.27. Yes, it's a very rare uh, storm. Uh, bizarre, because it's generally dry this time of year. But this storm will bring unusually heavy rainfall and a flooding and mudslide threats to parts of California. Okay, um, well, that doesn't sound good, does it? So, unusual May storm, local severe thunderstorms, flash flooding and mudslides, slick roads, unseasonably chilly. Uh, Ventu Sky. All right, so this is today, right? And it doesn't appear to be much rain at all in the country. Um, let's just... Northern California, let's go on up here. All right, so today it's like a quarter of an inch. Point one inch. Well, not much rain fall now, right? Well, right, let's just zoom in. And Chico, let's zoom in a little further. And we got a water bill. Okay. So, um, rain 0 0.03 inches in Lake Oregon. Not bad. 0 0.02 in Oroville City. But let's let's just take a look at, I don't know, how about Tuesday, 21st? Ah, 2.77, 2.75, 7.8. Hmm. Well, I don't believe that these are daily accumulations. This is, I hope it's not daily. Now let's look at a week from now. 2.7. All right. Well, two inches in Lake Oroville. Hmm. Um, I heard from a subscriber who said that could push you into, you know, the 900, 901 levels. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to take her word for it. Um, but it doesn't look like you've got much rain right now. Based on this satellite, you do have a lot of microwaving going on. All these ripples. All right. So, no, it doesn't look like much rain. And I heard from uh, subscribers that you had like light rain today. It's amazing these uh, weather reports that we're getting. You know, severe weather, millions at threat, thunderstorms, uh, you know, my god, it's, and then you get a couple of in or, or just a drizzle. Okay. Well, they are calling for more and more. Now, those uh, three storms back to back. Look, I can't figure out anything anymore, not based on what I am seeing on these sites. But if they want it to come about, 
you know, they can. You still have the constant extremely low frequencies on the Oregon-California border. Um, earlier, which I captured, and I'm you're just going to have to take my word for it, uh, there were plenty of extremely low frequencies that I could see, as well as that, you know, ripple, the uh, signatures of microwaves in use. All right, so let's just go back to the satellite for one moment. And I want to ask you guys, what is going on? Well, it looks, based on what we are seeing, severe storms right now in northern Kentucky, Ohio, and is that Indiana? Or is that Illinois? Why do I always get Illinois and Indiana? I, I can never remember which one is which. All right, well, it looks like high-frequency heating is taking place up north. Um, they did say earlier today, I did get this forecast, that, well, suddenly they were no longer talking about that central United States, that 800,000 square foot swath of severe weather, you know, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail, high winds, up to 80 miles per hour, hurricane winds, um, that were going to be, you know, from Texas, uh, right on up, you know, to Minnesota. Well, I didn't hear anything about those storms today, but I did hear that we would be getting storms coming from the west, going eastward, and look at how they are using their Doppler radar, the high frequency heating. Well, doesn't mean that anything is happening right now, but it generally means that something is about to happen. More flooding. All right. Let us know what's happening in your area, please. We also have the high frequency. Did this just erupt or did I not see it down here in Alabama? All right. Um, please let us know, especially in California. What? were the rains like? Well, let us know. Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, Alabama. And up here, oh, what am I looking at? I can't even see the boundary lines. Well, Idaho, Montana, uh, Wyoming, South Dakota. All right, let's just go to Composite radar. Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna really focus on California right now. Oroville Dam. So, this is what we are seeing right now. Extremely low frequencies. All right. Now, I want you to listen to this. Raising some concerns for people living below the Oroville Dam. KPIX 5's Wilson Walker is live in Oroville to tell us how officials are quelling fears of a disastrous deja vu. Wilson? Yeah, look, I, you know, on one hand, this is a story about the rainstorm and hydrology and how this new partially reconstructed dam will function. But on the other hand, this is a story about... A new partially reconstructed dam? Hmm. Trust. So there was a couple rumors about the dam breaking. It, that definitely broke out to a lot of people. So it was a nice little storm of circumstances that turned into a flood of online rumors. And while many of them were flat out ridiculous. Okay. I am so sick of, you know, mainstream media, uh, government officials, uh, these experts that are invited on to mainstream media, they all call us ridiculous idiots, conspiracy theorists, yada, yada, yada. You know, and so many people, well, you're not an expert. I listen to the experts. Oh, well, do research because you can find experts in any area, any field, and you'll find very conflicting information coming from those experts in the same field. But it's not just 
social media people online. It is experts like Scott Cahill and others who are raising an awful lot of questions. They have concerns, but yeah, it's presented. And look, Dave Hodges is right there. All right. Oh, God. You know, what a, this world, man, has manifested into such crap. The chatter got loud enough that the Butte County Sheriff thought it necessary to declare that there was no, quote, imminent threat. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of people worried. I'm sure he was getting phone calls uh, in his office. We're getting questions. Genoa Widener is just one of the people living here that has been raising concerns about the dam since the crisis of 2017. You know, when people started seeing rain in the forecast and realized that the spillway wasn't being used um, and we're so close to the top. In 2011, it, the lake stayed at elevation 900 for the entire month of July. Um, so it's pretty expected to see the lake at these high levels after we've had a very good water year. The Department of Water Resources insists that a full lake is business as usual and they... Wow. Okay. Business as usual. Uh, a full lake and keep that in mind 890 feet full lake business as usual keep that in mind they do not seem at all inclined to draw the lake down to ease nerves in fact they are planning on maxing out storage with this may storm um, so we do expect the lake to get pretty much close to capacity um, but we are Again, closely monitoring those forecasts and preparing for use of the spillway if we need to. But downstream from that spillway, there are still lingering concerns about the portion of the dam that has not been replaced. And as the social media storm has proven, there are a lot of people who no longer take anything with this dam for granted. The community really feels like we were lied to in 2017. It, it just completely destroyed any trust that the community had in DWR. And I do want to point out, yeah, they set up the situation by lying to those in this area, Department of Water Resources, officials lying. So, of course, there's no trust. There's an awful lot of questions about the dam, and the Department of Water Resources is not releasing the information that an awful lot of people want. So, of course, there is no trust and an awful lot of people speculating. Now, because of these mainstream media um, reports that we are seeing, especially about the rumors about you know, people concerned, I would find it, I would find it really remarkable if the Department of Water Resources is if there's going to be a collapse failure and a flood okay but then I step back and I think to myself well um, it could be like my subscriber said who lives in this area that it's out of control already. But don't you think good, decent people would warn the people? Or we don't know. We don't have an awful lot of good, decent people, uh, certainly not working in um, a, a government capacity. All right. So it's at 890, a full lake. Business as usual. Let's listen to this. Oroville, where water levels are looking very positive right now. I am with Jenna Frazier of the Department of Water Resources. Jenna, you guys are pretty happy. We are absolutely thrilled, actually. More than happy. This is looking really good right now. Give me some numbers, um, numbers that we can understand. This is a big lake that holds a lot of water. What are the numbers telling you? The numbers right now is our lake is at 855 feet in elevation, which means we are at about roughly 92% of capacity. So the, that means we're almost full. <laughs> and wow. 855 feet, we're almost full. 92% capacity? and it's at 890 
these are hourly readings let's see because it's just 9.03 p.m. well 6.03 p.m. at 890 so they haven't put down the new numbers if I remember I'll go back um, all right but 855 is at full or near full capacity but listen to what she has to say coming up in, in the, plain speak in, in plain speak almost full, almost full is what that means and the historical average means that we we look back over a period of january's over the years and so for the historical average we're doing really really well we this has been six years of drought nearly so that, that lake right now nearly full is looking really good. And that is a key word, drought. Compare right now, this year, compared to last year. Last year, we were at about 62, 63% roughly, so we were just a tiny bit over half. Typically in January, February, we like seeing it like it is right now. And for the last couple of years, that hasn't happened. So last year, about this time, we were in the 60s, and this year, we're in the 90s, so we're doing good, we're happy. And I think people get confused. It's a very complicated subject, water management. Lake Oroville is part of the state's water system. We are the beginning of the state water project. The this is the head of it. The beginning. And we're getting rain, and people are seeing water that is, how do you put it, let out of Lake Oroville? Correct. Why is that happening, and can you explain? The Lake Oroville is a working reservoir. It is built to fill and lower, fill and lower, go up and down, up and down, up and down. So the water that we store, we're storing from the rain inflow or snow melt inflow into Lake Reservoir, nearly 4,000 miles of watershed in the Sierra Nevadas. That's a lot. So when that water, rain, snow begins to melt, fill up Lake Oroville, if we have a lot of snow or heavy rainstorms coming, we have to save that top 50 feet of the reservoir to capture that. If we don't, then we would be in a major flood event. So this, over the past couple of weeks, we had a series of storms that we were letting water out for flood control to keep that top 50 feet empty for flood control. So we started letting water out down the spillway. People were both very excited because it's gorgeous, but they were also very angry that we're sending our water south to Welly swimming pools. That's not what we're doing. We're trying to keep that lake level st st stable so that when rain and snow begin to melt, it has somewhere to go. We can capture that volume because that area is empty. If are you are you listening to this at 855 feet? At 855 feet, we fill it. Now we're going to have to dump water at a, a reckless rate if we have heavy inflow. We don't want that to happen. We want it to be a controlled release. So it sounds like... 855 feet uh, is the level for flood protection. It's at 890 and steadily rising. Let's see if there's new... Not yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, this Department of Water Resource woman actually claims that now it's at 92% capacity at 855 feet. They keep 50 feet to accommodate rains and snow melt. And you're at 890, and this woman is saying that, you know, it's... <laughs> All right, something is very wrong here. Something is very wrong here. So I will link below to everything, but you guys in Oroville, uh, and all of you south of that dam, you need to be calling the Department of Water Resources and asking them how is it that in January 2017, January 30, 2017, this, I guess, spokeswoman for the Department of Water Resources claimed that you were near full at 855 feet and that is the level for flood protection you're now at 890 feet. What the hell is going on? All right. Um, 
Now, I am going to read some of these uh, articles on Paul Preston's site, and I will link below to everything. You guys in this area, you need to bookmark Paul Preston's site. I Again, the link is right below. But I want to go back to April 16, 2019, Oroville Main Spillway in Failure Mode, 2019, April. By the way, uh, your Oroville Dam catastrophe in 2017 occurred February 11. Am I right on that date? January 30, 2017? Wow, okay. Well, that seems to be highly unusual, but all right. President Trump, we have a problem. This was just shy of one month ago. Now, for all of you who don't understand a lot of the problems at the Oroville Dam, which I didn't until um, I did some research and until I read these articles, let me read them to you. The Oroville Dam spillway system was suddenly and unexpectedly shut down after 12 p.m. Thursday, April 11. As of this writing, there is equipment on the main spillway. At this time, there is no explanation as to why the complete shutdown of the Hyatt Power Plant and the main spillway occurred or the nature as to why there appears to be equipment on the spillway deck making repairs. The Oroville, or the... Um, Department of Water Resources said this. We stopped the releases from the Oroville Dam spillway on Wednesday because of forecasts showing upcoming dry weather. Okay. Um, so, what kind of dates are we looking at? From the Wednesday, April 10, 2019 edition. All right, I went back and looked at the levels. Now, April 7, it was at 8.53. Wow, okay. That's just shy of that flood protection, you know, level, 8.55. Um, 408, 8.53, 409, 8.56. 8.58, 8.59, it continues to rise. But that woman said at 8.55, they begin to release waters, and yet they haven't. Why? All right. Uh, releases over the past 10 days have provided adequate space in the reservoir to help provide flood protection. Well, that doesn't appear to be true based on what this woman said, 855. So what you are seeing is levels above 855 and they have been continuing to go up to 890. 890.22, let's refresh and see, yes, 890 now point 26 continues to rise. Well above that flood protection level. All right, this is uh, Paul Preston. What was not expected was the complete shutdown of both the Hyatt Power Plant releases and the main spillway. Department of Water Resources records show that both systems were stopped at 3 p.m. April 11, 2019. So what was the level? April 11? Let's see. April 11. 859. Above 855. Oh, well. Why would they stop since they release waters at 855 to keep that 50 feet to accommodate the rain and snow melt? Why would they stop? Well, a lot of people have been speculating that, yeah, the first test, why they stopped? Because it failed. It failed. So take note of this white line here to the right and these wavy lines in the water. All right, we'll get to that. The picture above shows the spillway partially closed but not completely sealed. Department of Water Resource officials were unable to completely seal the main gates and were forced to expose workers who appeared on the spillway surface 
to work in several inches of water streaming in a thin sheet down the spillway. And the chalky substance that streamed down the spillway uh, in the area where workers were seen using equipment, um, that's the white stuff. All right. Um, plates buckling and seepage appears in the new exclusive breaking photos. Major buckling and leaking of the plates on the new spillway are appearing in photos taken yesterday, April 16. That's only shy of one month ago. This is the first public look at what appears to be major problems after only a few days of the new spillway being used. According to those familiar with the situation, the plates in the spillway should be smooth, not buckling, with no leakage from between the plates as there appears to be in these photos. Buckling. Okay. Um, all right. All of these waves and leaks. So, the water is flowing down the spillway and slams into the buckled plate seams and creates a wave. The spillway is supposed to be a flat, smooth surface. Right side of the picture are leaks as water under pressure from being uh, from behind the spillway forces water through the concrete. The waves are supposed to be smooth. Okay. Uh, engineer walks the spillway inspecting buckled seams. The water are leaks from the buckled seams. To the right can be seen buckled plates against the fra uh, training wall. The plate seams have lifted, which is indicated by their black stripe appearance in front of the inspector to this to his right at the third and fourth plate buckling of the two plates is evident right here okay so um, that was April 16 they used leaf blowers to dry the leaks now where is this where's this leak this leak is right where the spillway gave way on February 11, 2017. Now, there are a lot of links to additional information about the Oroville Dam on the site. But let me also read some of, uh, well, March 22nd, Experts claim California water officials are flirting with disasters at Oroville Dam. You can read this article. Um, Scott Cahill, who is an expert, went out with Paul Preston and inspected the dam. And this was in, well, two months ago. Only two months ago. Expert Scott Cahill. Water, this is what he said, water can be seen seeping from the foot of the dam and dozens of points along the new spillway. And that concrete spillway slab is now moving water, which is evolving up through the slab today, very similar to what it did before the failure in 2017. He is even more concerned with cracks in the gates along the crest of the dam, something he says is already in what he calls failure mode. The possibility exists that a cutback will occur there that will allow the pool to release. At that point, we'll no longer have control over the velocity or the amount of water that's moved downstream. Kay Hill said, he sent his concerns to the Department of Water Resources and they ignored him. So here, is, here he is with Paul Preston and stated here the credentials that you see displayed by Paul Preston and the yellow vest and the helmets worn by Preston and Cahill. That was Department of Water Resources protocol. You have to sign in and register at the Department of Water Resources headquarters before 
they would allow you to go anywhere near you know the site so now the Department of Water Resources they're claiming that Paul I mean um, Scott Cahill never visited the dam even though he signed and registered with the Department of Water Resources and there he is and they're claiming Scott Cahill wasn't there holy shit the lying in this country Oof. well here, maintain records of visits to the dam and spillways and have no record of Mr. Cahill visiting. So, you can check out um, all of the links and there are more uh, questions like this gap that you see right here uh, shows the gap in the middle where roller compacted concrete was used. This is not too long ago, guys. So, uh, here. Now we have a May 12, four days ago, latest photos from Oroville show increased leakage. The latest photos provided by the California State Department of Water Resources, Resources shows increased leakage on the main Oroville Dam spillway. Two photos taken on the morning of May 12 of this year show overnight leaks have not gone away, but increased over the last week, attempts by the Department of Water Resources to use various injection solutions have failed to deter the water behind the spillway plates. Okay, you can see the leakage. And this is the dam in the afternoon sun, so it's dried up. All right, and he just posted again today. Are we holding back the water? New concerns over the safety. Recent pictures obtained by New Cali News show there are two boom lifts inside the inner two radial arm gate sleuthways. Eight radial arm gates, called tainter gates, are the main gates used to hold back the water in Lake Oroville as the water level rises to 813 feet. As the lake level rises, the pressure on the gates becomes greater. At the current lake level of 889, now it's 890, working its way to 891, uh, the water is nearly 10 feet above the tops of the gates. Damage includes, uh, well, wait, let me just see. Okay, February 2017, when the lake overtopped the emergency spillway in February 2017, damage includes a 14-foot crack that appeared on one of the walls that supports a gate. Has that crack been repaired? Several of the gates are not in alignment with the guides causing the gates to leak. Leakage on both the spillway and from the radial arm gates is not supposed to occur under any circumstance from a dam. Pictures do indicate that the use of the spillway gates will not be used anytime soon to prevent the use of the emergency spillway, which begs several questions about what will the Department of Water Resources do with the expected 7 to 12 inches of rain expected in the next few days. I will link below to everything. And it appears this live stream has stopped. Yes. Well, I will link below to this live stream, but what I am seeing is waves. Oh, here we go. All of the waves. So, what are we seeing? I'm not an expert. I'm passing along information. But this is very concerning. Um, I will also link below to University of California, Berkeley Center for Catastrophic Risk Management. Uh, root causes analysis of the Oroville Dam, gated spillway failures, and other developments. You might want to call Robert Bia, who uh, is um, Professor Emeritus, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering Advisor, Center for Catastrophic R Risk Management, Oroville Dam Advisory Group. And this is a, what is it, 124-page report on the... Well, the root causes its analysis of the Orville Dam. Um, have we heard from Robert Bea? 
Well, I'd prefer to hear from Scott Cahill. So, any of you who know Scott Cahill, can you call him? Paul Preston, you've established a relationship with Scott Cahill. Can you call him and see what he is saying right now with these water levels at 890 feet when we have this Department of Water Resources employee saying 855, that's 92% capacity, that's that level for flood protection. We keep it 50 feet. Um, we keep the additional 50 feet to accommodate for rain and snow melt. All links are below. Stay safe, everybody.